God bless you guys. This is Sean here from Face Brings Change. I just want to come on here because uh, I haven't been on here uh, a couple days or whatever. And I uh, just want to talk to, with you about some stuff, guys. Uh, if you can if you can pray for me also, there's a, been a bunch of stuff going on lately with my job and my home. And um, I had this word that basically in four days, in four days, you're going to see the hand. And there were two things I was thinking. Number one is uh, there's this daredevil character uh, or this daredevil clan. And it's it's a comic book with Marvel and doing some allegorical stuff. And there was this, um, basically, if you see the four horsemen in the book of Revelation, the first one has a, uh, has a uh, bow, you know. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And God said it had something to do with a covenant or a contract. And I know that's been lately opposed because they say, how can you conquer with a bow and arrow? Or how can, you, how can you do that? But you can conquer people with making a covenant by, by winning them over. And so God does plays on words and everything. And in that place of that, I saw this uh, actress, Christina Rishi, and she uh, was profile faced over to the to the right and she had the mark of the beast on her right hand in the vision and she shook hands with the woman who was actress Allison Mack uh to to the right and it was and so when when the imagery of the hand always reminded me of a contract and he would say that word over and over he couldn't speak to me about contracts and related to the hand that was the second thing I thought and the, the reason why the first thing I thought about the whole hand of the daredevil character because the next character after him that i saw the red horse rider effect was uh michael clark duncan and he had tears in his eyes and this may seem comical to you guys but he looked like he was dressed like ed the clown he had a judge's uniform that was black and white but almost like a clergyman but I don't know how to, it was almost like a baby bed black over the ruffles. You know, have you seen Ed the Clown with the ruffles? He has, it looked like that. And he was judging, he was crying. And it said, God was talking about people judging in their pain, you know, and, and not judging for the Lord. And, and there's a lot of racial tensions. I don't want to get into all that right now, but there's a lot of stuff happening. But he was the one that I saw in that vision. And I used to watch, I liked him in the Green Mile, watched him, but the Lord showed me that. And so I was told uh, there's, a, there's a hand clan or something, basically, guys, in uh, the Daredevil character. Uh, it's some huge clan, and it works for Kingpin. Well, he played the Kingpin, and so I was thinking at first it was that. And then second, I was thinking the major theme is some kind of contract. And I was like, wait, it's not going to be a contract broken. In four days, is it? In four days, contract or a house was broken because we had to. We have to move out. We have a month now left to move. Uh, well, we we ended up having to buy the house, and I'm going through stuff like that right now, signing stuff. But the Lord told me that. He also told me, it gave me a vision, 61 days back from something that told me. You know, at this certain time. There's going to be a storm, you're going to be delayed, and this guy, uh, who I thought it was Salah, he's not going to show up to work, somebody's going to call him for him. Well, that's exactly what happened. And what I was told is they were covering for him, basically, because he served the, the people of the company in the way they wanted, and I didn't serve them the way they wanted, so when I would call in, I would have stuff. And guys, basically why I'm asking for prayer is because devil is sending a lot of attacks because he hates the word of God. And because I was bold and I, I got in the devil's face, you know, in the past, you know, uh, I didn't like them talking bad about other people and doing bad. I would say stuff at work. And so sometimes when they were like in the break room calling people pieces of trash, if they were sports stars, you know, like they didn't like the sports team, a boss of mine, he said, that player's trash, man. He's just trash. And then they, a political opponent, you know, somebody's wife, she's a dog, you know, she's a dog, look at her, ha ha, and they're supposed to be a Christian, you know, and stuff. And I would call those things out, and so I would get sometimes, but what I would notice, guys, was whenever I would call in or something, 
they would act like I had committed murder and go on and say he should be pulled to the office and all this stuff. And whenever they would call in, nobody would say anything. I didn't say anything to them, although I could. I was thinking, you said something to me, you, but they weren't being threatened to pull in the office. And I'm wondering why. But Jesus reminded me of the scripture, you know, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, therefore the world hates you. And... And people like when I was younger, I used to let intimidate me. And apparently they think like I'm five years old. They think I can, they can continue to intimidate me. Well, I've had enough and I'm putting my foot down. And, and they think they can just talk to me and bully me around. And the thing is, uh, is like if you're, if you're two people and you have a schedule or something you're doing, you have to work with each other. The, the, the world doesn't revolve around one person or the other. When you're in a contract between two people, it involves both parties. So you have to consult the other person when you're doing scheduling or different things. And apparently people think I'm just a doormat they can walk on. Well, I'm putting my foot down and the Lord told me in these visions in these dreams, I'm starting to get sturdier because he told me, you need to start standing up for yourself, Sean. Don't let people just tell you. Don't, don't, and he showed me how their power wasn't real power. It was just intimidation stuff. And he gave me a dream because this boss, I happened to share with him. Basically on social media, guys, I posted Malachi chapter four about the coming of Elijah. And there was a guy that had, I'd friended a while back, or he friended me, I can't remember, that I worked with, whose name was Billy. And he saw that post, and he wrote lies. And he's angry, you know, uh, stuff. He wrote lies. And then I, I rebuked him, and I was like, what? Oh, so now you're talking to me, devil. And the reason why I said that is because uh, he... He wouldn't even look at me or talk to me. And it was an issue of we were in a break room one day and he was he was just covered in the smell of boiled eggs and another guy had called him out like he can't it's like I can't breathe with that smell but he wanted to sit down you know and, and remember during COVID guys remember that six foot roll that they had they don't have, seem to have that anymore nobody has a problem with that anymore but he gets right in my face I'm like whoa bro chill out and he's like right against me and I was like find another spot you know give me some space you know I mean like right against me and then I tried to ignore it, but all that smell, I couldn't breathe. And I asked him to please move, and he wouldn't remove himself. And so I started going to the office, and he was real offended, like I insulted him. But I, I just couldn't breathe. I mean, that smell, it was like choking me. I get really nauseous very easy, and I couldn't eat my food. I had to pour it out. And so, yes, I, I was a little mad, but I tried to say, hi, hello, but Billy, how are you doing? I tried, to, I tried to say no hard feelings, but he wouldn't talk to me, but... After about a week or so, or two, it might have been three weeks, on social media, he comes on and calls me a liar. And I said, oh, so now you're talking to me, devil. And then he said, you read a lot of lies, and you speak even more lies, you know, because you'll hear me preaching at work. And so I basically told my managers, you know, I am not helping him in his frozen section anymore. I'm not helping him. He's on his own. Because uh, they want me to sometimes help on Frozen. I said, he hasn't been helping me in grocery. And we say we're supposed to be a team. So I'm not going to help him anymore. And they, and then my boss, my, my uh, manager, Bobby, said he'd have a talk with him about it. And he did. And he told me, and sure enough, he told me, uh, he told me Bobby or, or, or Billy said he wasn't, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't, uh, doing that to be mean to you well basically um he had a talk with him not only for that but the next day when I was at work I was talking about building myself up in the joy of the Lord you know and stuff and I heard just burst out sardonic laughter on the other aisle and he just kept bursting out laughing mocking me and 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 when I told uh my manager Bobby about this stuff and I'm not going to help him till the you know at all he said well you'll have a talk with him and then we can square that out. He had a talk with him and Bobby came back to me on aisle, uh, it was aisle one. And I believe it I was stocking, you know, different stuff on there. It's a bread section and all that. And he told me, uh, you know, uh, he had to talk with him and he, he said he was just joking with me. And I was like, are you kidding me? A guy who won't even look me in the face for weeks. And the day before he goes on social media to call me a liar and post all this stuff and I had to block him and you're telling me he's joking 
And then I mentioned another guy, Sala, laughing. He's like, oh, so now Sala's laughing. Like, he didn't believe me. And I said, look, I've, I've been going through stuff, Bobby. I have to move. Our contract is broken and, and about, you know, it's broken and about we have to move, you know, I, he already knew that situation with that. I have a lot of stuff going on right now. I've, I've had a lot of stuff to deal with in, in life. He's like, well, we all do. And I said, well, when I have look like I have tears in my eyes or, or something I'm going on and, and somebody's looking at me straight in the eye when they're seeing that expression and they start laughing at me, looking at me and start laughing. And I said, then that's mocking. And I don't like that. And I said, it's sick for somebody to do that. And he basically, you know, was trying to act like, you know, well, Saul is a good person. And I said, no, he's not. He's not a good person. And this is the way the world judges. They they judge themselves in their own eyes. Every man thinks he's good in his own eyes. He won't judge by the standard of God. There's no mockery in the kingdom of God. But I said, this is the proof. And I mentioned the dream I had. I said, Jesus, and he knows I'm a Christian. I said, Jesus, in my dream, told me, 61 days ago on that particular day when he called in for his knee messing up he told me there's going to be a storm it's going to delay you and he's going to uh have somebody call in for him he's not even going to have to call in whereas you would have to call in and i was told because he did everything they wanted to basically he didn't never says anything about sin or anything he does what they want and he doesn't he goes with the flow of the crowd which is going to hell like everybody else and so that's why they didn't bother him. And I said, in the dream, God told me he was a mocker. And I had this spider on my back sinking his fangs into me. And this was related to a couple days before that dream, um, where I was told, basically, that the people on my back, you know, I, I confronted them for what they're doing. I confronted a boss of mine. And I wrote him a letter because he's supposed to be a Christian. That one that called the star is trash, basically. Pieces of trash. I confronted him with a letter. Because they were threatening possibly pull me off this. And I was writing just, you know, that says the Lord, my sheep, hear my voice. If you're my sheep, you'll hear my voice. He who is not my sheep doesn't hear my voice. And I prophesied, that says the Lord, you know, I've seen what's been going on. And how there's no grace and how every man, as soon as he has a charge, he wants to yank somebody to the office or he wants to threaten him. And this is what the wicked do. They threaten you. They threaten to do bad stuff to you if they don't get their way. And they act like children a lot of times. And so, you know, he was he was uh, threatening. So I so I I posted that to him. And when I came back to work, you know, I, I was hearing in the dream, God was talking to me all day about this. And he showed me how he was on the cross when he, that day he died and went down into hell. And how the devil was trying to pretend to be God's voice saying, arise, anoint yourself. And he saw, he tried to get him to put on garments. And then when he looked at the garments, they burned up. And he was playing tricks on his mind, trying to make him think what he did was wrong. You know, because he had, he preached against sin and everything. Maybe he could have been more gracious. And it was tricks. And I heard, who are you to send a text like that to me on my day off? Because I'd sent my my boss a text. Thus says the Lord, you know, that, that oppression to stop doing that. Or he's going to, he's you know, his name's out of the book of life already. And he didn't like that. But anyways, when I went to work, they called me uh, to the back and receiving. And him and the other bosses, and they all stood. And they were trying to rebuke me for that and, and saying that I, that was on his dad's birthday I did that and I said well it was my mom's birthday too and then uh, he said who are you to say that and I said messenger of the Lord Malachi I brought up that and uh you know and he said you know he's he's a good person all blah and I said no you're n no you're not he said he said he's of God and I said no you're not because you're rejecting the word of God and he was yelling at me and saying all this stuff and threatening me and trying to threaten like I could be fired and I, and I said no you're not and this is the reason why you're in trouble and I said all of you guys standing against me you know you thought you could intimidate me well I got God on my side and I said who do you guys have and they were so angry and this one guy said the difference between me and you, Sean, is you quote scripture, I quote facts. And I said, yeah, who needs mercy when you quote facts? Because every time somebody calls in, you know, he, he wants to pull somebody to the office and have somebody written up. But when he calls in, it's supposed to be hunky-dory, you know, and it's, it's, there's hypocrisy. And so, 
you know, I call out the hypocrisy when I see it, when, when there's that stuff done, because there needs to be justice. And if you let people bully you around and intimidate you, then, then that's what will keep happening. You have to put your foot down, guys. You have to use your authority in the Lord. And that's what I did. And sure enough, you know, they didn't, I stayed there and I kept working, but they, he was trying to tell me, uh, my boss said, I sent that, that made him weak and he was so sad. Well, if you're hurting other people and your name's not in the book of life, you should be feel weakened and you should feel sad for that. So you can repent and go to heaven because God forbid, if you die in that sin, you'll go straight to hell. And then you really will be weak and then you really will be sad. But anyways, um, my boss talking about these issues of these guys doing this and, and, and Billy, and he said there was nothing wrong with him. Well, he came back to me and, and I'd run into my boss, Bobby, on my way out, it was about 6.05 a.m., uh, two days or three days ago. And when I was coming out of my work, basically, I uh, I ran into him and he mentioned and he said hi. And I said hi, and, you know, and I was, I was heading out and I've, I've had different things going on. There's been some construction around my house, so I've had to leave 30 minutes early or temporarily. And, and I don't want to get into that right now. But anyways... He said, well, I want to just see if, you know, uh, how you're doing and maybe we, me and you and Erica can go in the office, a, a store director or a person that works there, but uh, a unit director. But uh, but I said, uh, I said, you know, I said, I'm, I'm fine, you know, no, no, no problem. And I didn't want to go to any office or anything because that was the whole thing I was talking to them. I don't want to go to any offices of them. And I said, I'm fine. Me and Billy shook hands. Billy said he was sorry to me. He, he they, But he, he pretended to say he was just joking around with me, which I knew he wasn't. But he finally ended up, I guess, forgiving me in his heart. And I said, so I shook his hand. I, I knew, you know, I was like, you know, you weren't joking with me, but that's what I was thinking in my mind. But I forgive you, you know. I was for, forgiving him anyways. But anyways... I said, you know, I'm fine and stuff and everything and, and just, and then I left. Well, I went to sleep and during that day, God gave me a dream to show me what he was planning on doing. And in the dream, there was my niece, Jessica, and she's had depression problems she's gone through in her life, you know, uh, stuff related to her dad and things, but I don't want to go into that. He's having a hard time. He's my brother, but my older brother. But uh, Jessica in the dream, she uh, she was sitting in front of a TV, and there was a there was a show. It was SpongeBob SquarePants, and the characters on the show were like just giving her a hard time, and whatever they were saying was uh, making her cry. And then to my right, at the same time, there was this guy Joseph Abraham, and he's a menace preacher of the Lord, and he was just preaching hard. And whatever it was, was like for her, for me. And I told her, focus on this person to the right. Don't focus on this TV to the left. It's not even real. And then after that, the scene changed. And I was standing before uh, my cousins. Uh, and maybe this will, will uh, bother them. But I just want to state clearly that what I saw in the dream doesn't reflect n necessarily the children of these. So if you're my cousins, I'm not talking about you. This, the dream, uh, the, the mother of these children and the children represent something totally different. So it doesn't mean I'm talking about you. It's just God had to use, who did I watch as children in my life? Well, in the dream, uh, it was, it was one of my cousins, uh, uh, the mother and, and she was saying, you know, and you only have to watch them one more time and she was smiling this was an angel and she said until 6 13 p.m and 6 13 are the number of commandments and the word of god um you can find out later and i'd already looked that up a few days before but basically in the dream then i found myself in back in the and i used to watch them years ago when i was younger but but I found myself back in the den where I used to live and I was trying to hide out there. And I was like, no, I tried to tell my mom they're coming and she acted like she didn't know what to do and she had to work, you know, and I told her I had to go to work that night. But I, I shut myself up in the room. I didn't, I changed my mind. I didn't want to watch them. I was like, I can't do this. I got work tonight. 
and I was, I was trying to sleep and I'm thinking that I might have to call in and then I heard on my answering machine this guy Bobby my boss answer and say and and it was like this thoughts were injected into my mind you're about to be you're on the edge of being fired you have all these call-ins that was what was shot into my mind from that person and then he spoke out loud and, and said we need to come here to the office uh to cross-examine you to discuss your mental health so that's exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to discuss my mental health that I was crazy, basically, say. And I woke up and I told him the dream and I kind of rebuked him. And I said, I did not know that's what you were doing. And I prophesied, thus says the Lord, basically, you want to pull me into your offices, I will pull you into mine, says the Lord. I found out SpongeBob SquarePants on that on that uh, TV, that was actually him. And God said he's like a cartoon character, the authority he has. It's no real authority before me. And and what was he saying on the TV? I found out he was basically calling Jessica, saying, Jessica represented me, he was saying she was sick. And her name means she whom God sees. And he was called saying she was sick, she needed mental help. Well, the guy, Joseph Abraham, on my right, guess what he was saying? I come to find out he was saying a person who's an atheist, who doesn't keep the commandments of God, who who does their own thing, that's a sick, mentally pers disturbed person. They're risking everything. That's totally crazy. And this is what always that guy would say I would remember because God gives you the context clues of the dream. The dream was about m being mentally ill. I was accused of being mentally ill. But God said, no, it's the other way around. You're not mentally crazy. You're not schizophrenic. They are. And I said, do you have any proof of this, Lord? And he said, what time did you talk to Bobby that morning when you found out he was going to cross-examine you for being crazy? And I said, 6.05 a.m. And he said, look up 6.05 in Hebrew. And I did. And it said, sick, mentally ill. And it said, incurable, uh, related to wickedness, beyond being cured of wickedness. So it's a disease related to uh, being uh, uh, because of your wickedness. And God said, they're the sick ones, not you. And he said, remember, he, he didn't bring up to try to help you. He brought up how you're on the edge of being fought, fired. You have all these call-ins. And then brought up your uh, what he perceived to be your um, mental illness or weakness. To try to use your weakness to put fear into you that you're in their hands like clay and they control you. And he said, that's, that's sick. And he said, that's what a lot of people do. They use intimidation and fear tactics. He said, they're the sick ones, not you. And I never, I never posted any judgments or any, none of them had threats. I mean, when I was younger, I remember not doing anything to anybody and they would mock me. And I would say, you're going down to people at this. And, and they didn't have the word of God thrown at them until they started doing evil. And so they can't say God just brought judgments to them for no reason. They started doing evil. Then they were met with the, the judgment. So they can't throw dirt in God's face. You know, first they, they, they said something. They struck first. And if you look in the Bible, the first murderer happened by Cain, you know, who hated uh, Abel for his righteous works because his works were wicked. And so that's why the first murder happened. That's why all the evil happened. And so back then, I was getting mocked. And that's when the first judgment was slapped on them. You're going down because they were mocking. And so they can't say God judged them for no reason. They actually gave him a reason to judge. And he even offered them forgiveness. And they even did more evil. And so this is why there's a judgment, guys. But, but guys, you can't let other people walk on you. And I'm not saying you forgive and you love people, but you, we got to get tough, guys, because there's persecution. And if you let people control you, they will, guys. You have to use your spiritual authority. You're not, you know, don't let people make you feel like you're less than you are. Because the reason why I acted out in those insecure mentalities is just because I believe the lies that people told me. And Jesus said in the dreams, the reason this is not, wasn't your stuff you suffered. That was the stuff they shot into your mind that caused you that. That wasn't your sickness. That was theirs. And he brought me to Isaiah 53. Surely our sicknesses were put on him. And it's not only speaking of Jesus on the cross, but 
his people got the sicknesses of the world put on them because of persecution and stuff. Because they were sick, they were using fear and manipulation tactics. And so God said, it's not yours, it's theirs. And so he said, I want you to give them back their stuff. Give them back their fear. Give them back their intimidation. Uh, don't receive any intimidation or fear anymore. You put your foot down, you take a stand as a child of God. And, and you, you know, you have authority also in the Lord. And that trumps any physical authority because there's coming a time soon, guys, when people are going to be broken as with a rod of iron. That says that in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 12. And it's because God says, I, I'm putting my foot down. I've had enough. It's enough that they rule their own people with fear and control them. But they're not going to control my people anymore. And so, guys, we have to we have to get tough in the Lord. We have to stand our ground, guys, because hard times are coming. And there's going to be a much more than this. It's going to be amped up to a much higher degree. And we're going to need to take a firm stand in the Lord. Or we're going to be trampled underfoot by people, guys. And so hang on to the Lord and uh, don't stray from his path because I noticed uh, he told me not to take any food or anything from people. Because when you do, and if they should do evil to you and you rebuke them for that, they say, well, you owe me, basically. That's the, the uh, kind of the way they would argue in your mind. I did this, this, and that for you. And he said, don't take anything for them anymore because, because they think that gives them license to do evil. And it doesn't. And so when I was given a $100 bill even at work, I wasn't going to take it. I was going to give it to my brother, but I didn't get that bill. Uh, I ended up walking out of there. But the snacks and everything I gave him. But I'm not taking any food or anything from them. And so now when I've been able to rebuke the people whenever I've had to, not for any reason, but when they're getting in my face, then I haven't had any, I've been able to stand stronger. And it's like they act like they're, they're shocked at that. Well, I, God has strengthened me. And one of the ways that strengthened is he said, don't take any food or anything from them. And he said, don't even look. When you make contact, eye contact with a person who's a mocker or they, they look down at you and they judge you, don't even look into their eyes. Because when I used to, it was like getting hit in the head with a rock. I could feel their judgment. They'd be thinking negative things. And so don't even look in their eyes, God said. Don't look in their eyes. Don't be afraid not to look. Jesus says, I don't want to look at that either. That's that's sinful. And so uh, we have to strengthen ourselves in the Lord, guys. And uh, But I'm going to tell you know my boss, Bobby, look, you know, I'll come in. I'll stock your groceries. No, I'll come in. I'll break down your truck. I'll spot your items. I'll stock your groceries. I'll block. I'll do everything you want me to. But if any anyone in this company threatens me th through fear and of intimidation because of a call-in or something, or they try to use fear and intimidation to control me or beat me down, then the gloves are going to come off. And so this goes for anybody out there working in witchcraft. And he showed me them as spiders. And he said, what do spiders represent, Sean? And I said... Well, spider in, you know, in the occult represents witchcraft, typically. I mean, in heaven, it can represent knowledge, spiders, but, but witchcraft. And he said, so yeah, the workers of iniquity. Fear and manipulation is the same thing as witches do. They, they send out a demon to try to intimidate you, to scare you away from whatever you're doing so you'll back off from that. And he said, this is witchcraft. And, the, and he said, this is, you know, this is evil. And so you got to stand against it, guys, because you're not fighting a person. It's the demons and the people that are getting them to do that. You know. And he says, don't fear everything the nations fear. Don't call everything conspiracy they call conspiracy. Fear the Lord. Let him be your, be your dread and your fear. We're not commanded to fear any other gods. Obey your leaders. Do everything you tell them, Jesus said. But don't do as they do. Because they lay very many heavy burdens on men's shoulders, but they won't lift them with one of their fingers. He said, so don't be like that. And so like at it, it, it work, you know, the, the bosses a lot of times, they'll want us to throw these big heavy trucks. But in the morning, they're not doing their counting and a lot of stuff. And so trucks back up. And so they're not really doing, they got twice as much. They got about, they're overstaffed on the, the, uh, the day crew. 
and they're not working a lot of the items they're supposed to. And when it was just me and another guy on day, we did all the back stock. And they don't do any of that back stock. They don't even do one of that anymore. And so there's a lot of stuff, dirt, you know, sometimes, you know, like our boss. And, 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 and I'll do the work and everything. I'll even do that heavy stuff and not point it out. But I, God told me, you know, if they're pointing out your shortcomings, he said, point out the shortcomings of the company. You know, bring up the hypocrisy. Don't don't be afraid to stand against that. And I said basically to my boss in that email, you know, uh, thus says the Lord, you pull people to your offices, I will pull people to my your people to my offices. You know, and if you do these things to them, I will give to you according to your works as you do to my people. And I said, thus says the Lord, and he wrote, good to hear, you know, in, in a prayer, but hand so I don't know how it's going to be but just just pray for me guys that this uh all this kind of attacks and everything that I'll continue to stand strong because it's it's just a battle of keeping me standing guys and you stand strong too guys and I love you and, and it's not always comfortable and I don't always feel comfortable talking about this but God is giving me victory guys and he will give you victory in Jesus' name. You have authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Until next time, shalom.